Most of us are aware of the importance of washing our hands with soap and water to stop the spread of disease. But fewer of us know what to do about airborne transmissible diseases. These are diseases you can get by simply breathing. They spread through the air in small droplets and even smaller particles, which can stay suspended in the air over long distances and for long amounts of time. When healthy people breathe in contaminated droplets or particles, they can get sick. Diseases that spread through the air include Legionnaire's disease that comes from environmental sources and many others that are transmitted from people, such as the flu, pneumonia, tuberculosis, measles, mumps, rubella, whooping cough, chickenpox, and the COVID-19 virus. Understanding how these diseases pass from one person to another is crucial for reducing the risk of transmission. When we breathe out, microscopic particles, also known as aerosols, are carried along in the exhaled air. These particles come from our lungs, throats, and mouths and are carried away into the room. Some of these particles are big enough that gravity pulls them quickly to the ground, but most of these particles are so small that they float around in a room for minutes or even hours. We don't generally worry about the particles we exhale unless someone is sick with a respiratory disease. When a sick person breathes out, exhaled air particles can contain the virus or bacteria that is making them sick. Those particles then float around in the indoor air for a long time. If a healthy person breathes in enough of those disease particles, then they could also get sick. The contagiousness of a disease depends on how likely it is to be in the exhaled particles, how long it survives in the air, and how much of it must be inhaled by someone else to cause a new infection. In some cases, this can be just a few disease-carrying particles. We know that the number of particles we exhale, and therefore the likelihood of disease transmission, depends on what we're doing. In general, we exhale more particles when we're speaking than when we're simply breathing, about 10 times more. The louder someone is speaking or even singing, the more particles they emit. And similarly, the harder someone is breathing, such as from exercise, the more particles they emit. Coughing and sneezing emit huge numbers of particles, about 50 times more than speaking. People tend to talk a lot more often than they cough, however, and breathe even more. So all of these activities are important sources of airborne germs. What happens to these disease-carrying particles after they are exhaled will influence the potential for transmission. A sneeze starts out traveling at about 10 miles per hour, or 15 feet per second, while a breath travels only at about 2 miles per hour, or 3 feet per second. As this exhaled air, called a plume, moves away from us, it quickly slows down while also growing in size. In the end, an exhaled air plume only travels a few feet before mostly coming to a stop. At this point, the natural or induced air motions in a room will take over and mix the exhaled air around. Think of someone plugging in a scented air freshener. If you're across the room, you won't smell it right away. But eventually, the scent mixes through the air enough that you start to smell it. The time it takes to do so can range from seconds to minutes, depending on how fast the air is moving. As the air freshener keeps releasing chemicals and the air keeps mixing, the smell gets stronger with time because the scent is building up in the indoor air. Disease-carrying particles behave similarly but since we can't smell or see them, it's important that we understand what is happening so we can reduce their spread. The more disease-carrying particles build up in a room, the greater the chances that someone healthy will inhale them and possibly get sick. Many factors affect this buildup, such as the number of people in a room. The more people in a room, the more likely it is that some of them are sick. A larger number of sick people in a room means more disease-carrying particles will be breathed into the air. The size of the room also matters. In a smaller room, the concentrations of exhaled particles, as with any pollutant, can build up to higher levels than in a larger space. 
Imagine a drop of food coloring in a cup of water versus a bucket. A larger room helps minimize the risk of disease transmission. However, if you just pack more people into a larger space, the benefits of the larger room start to decrease. A great option to mitigate risk is to keep the density of people in a space low, so the amount of potential disease-carrying particles per volume of air also remains low. We can also use the third R, remediation, to remove disease-carrying particles from the air and reduce, but not eliminate, the risk of transmission. Remediation includes ventilation and filtration. Ventilation brings fresh, new air into a room to flush out old air. Filtration uses filters and portable air cleaners to remove particles and other pollutants from the air. Both processes help keep the concentration of disease-carrying particles low. You can increase ventilation by opening windows and doors and by correctly using a good heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, or HVAC system. In California, requirements for minimum building ventilation rates are set by the California Building Energy Efficiency Standards to ensure fresh air is brought into a building. If a lot of people are sick in your community, then you might consider going beyond this guidance. For example, operating in the all-fresh mode, meaning bringing in 100% outdoor air. For filtration, it is important to install and maintain high-quality HVAC filters that are rated MERV 13 or above and ensure they are sized appropriately for the space. You can also use portable air cleaners inside a room for extra filtration. These strategies are discussed further in part three of our video series. Of course, we don't want to forget about the other two R's, source removal and source reduction. When it comes to respiratory disease transmission, removal can be as simple as having people who feel ill stay at home. For some diseases, however, including COVID-19, people can be infectious even if they're not experiencing any symptoms. Source reduction includes encouraging the wearing of high-quality, well-fitting masks. Masks can reduce the number of infectious particles a sick person spreads to the room, although masks can vary tremendously in terms of effectiveness. In general, people should opt for the most effective mask available, such as an N95, or if needed, a KF94, rather than a cloth or surgical mask. Source reduction also includes recommending that people stay up to date with their vaccines, as vaccination is an effective way to reduce transmission. Overall, the risk of respiratory disease transmission is much higher indoors than outdoors, as smaller enclosed spaces allow for more buildup of disease-carrying particles. By understanding the basics of how respiratory diseases enter and travel through the air, factors that affect transmission from one person to another, and strategies that can improve indoor air quality, we can reduce the risk of transmission in our indoor spaces and keep more people healthy.